Hello and welcome to our latest fund manager interview. Joining me today is Mark Slater, fund manager of the Slater Growth Fund. Mark, thank you for your time today. Great pleasure. Mark, you seek to find great growth businesses at a reasonable price. So how do you go about finding them? Our process starts off being entirely quantitative, where we're screening the entirety of the UK market, primarily focused on looking for businesses which are growing at an above average rate, which for us is 10% plus, which we can buy relatively cheaply. And our measure of the price of growth is the PEG, which compares the PE with the growth rate. And our third sort of string to our bow is a, a, an analysis of cash flow. And in particular, looking at free cash flow and also the degree to which profit is converted into cash. By using those screens, we eliminate 95% of the UK market. And then our focus is almost entirely qualitative on the remaining 5% to, to really drill down into what it is that's driving the growth and what is it that makes it reliable and is likely to continue. In 2020, the Slater Growth Fund has had a better year than the majority of funds in the Investment Association's UK or companies sector. Why do you think that has been the case? Well, I mean, in, when the sort of chaos hit in March, everything went down fairly indiscriminately, but very quickly, investors began to look at what was affected most, you know, what really was affected. Um, and a very large chunk of our portfolio is not particularly affected by COVID. Um, another chunk, slightly smaller chunk, um, is only temporarily affected, but very clearly temporarily affected. And we had a relatively small proportion of the fund, I would say about an eighth, you know, about 12%, that was clearly very affected. Um, so that would be companies where government had shut them down for a period, or you know, companies where there was a clear, very direct, but serious impact. Um, even those companies, obviously, in the last few weeks, have been recovering very, very strongly, and actually look set well to, to do very well indeed over a longer period. And in 2020, as a whole, has it been a a busy year in terms of portfolio trading activity, because as you mentioned, obviously there's the, the sell-off in the first quarter of the year. Did you use that time as an opportunity to pick up some bargains? Yeah, we were very busy. I mean, it's been an incredibly busy year. Uh, the first order of business for us was to check that we weren't exposed to businesses that might fail. Um, and we, we weren't exposed to that, to that risk, but that was the first thing. There was then an enormous amount of data to absorb because companies were reporting again and again, month after month, on the impact of government schemes, on how they how they saw things. Um, now, fortunately, in almost all cases, their reporting back in March has proven to be very conservative. Most of them have significantly beaten their expectations back at the worst point in, in the COVID period. Um, but yeah, it's been very busy. Um, once we'd absorbed a lot of this data, um, we added very materially to about 20 existing holdings. Um, we've added uh, 10 new positions this year, which is more than usual at this stage. Um, and um, of those eight, we've added since March, since the COVID uh, uh, period began. Could you run through a couple of those eight holdings that you've added? Yeah, I mean, they're a mixture of of, of different types of business. So we took the view that a, if a business was affected negatively by COVID, it didn't necessarily mean it was a bad business. You know, a lot of that is luck. Um, the, um, but having said that, there are some businesses that were affected by COVID that were bad businesses, um, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad business. So one business we, we added uh, to was a company called Cape, which is, uh, a leading VPN company, which obviously is there that's been very busy. So they, they haven't been affected negatively by COVID at all. But I mean, another couldn't be more different as a business is uh, Jet2, the old Dart uh, group, which um, is in the holiday business. And that couldn't be more affected by COVID. Um, we came in um, on, a, on a financing to help the business through all this in May. Um, and the shares have, have doubled since. 
and our view it is a business we always had a great great very great regard for but they'd often been expensive at various points we'd looked at them so we were able to come in at, at a very advantageous price into a business which we think is a great long-term business and actually although there's been a near-term impact over a longer period of time we would expect them to take a lot of market share they, they should be a, a, you know, COVID is very negative short term for them, but it's probably very positive long term. And have you been as active in terms of um, selling holdings as well? Has, has there been any examples of holdings you had that now look more structurally challenged um, following COVID-19? Um, we haven't really sold much in that way. We, we've only sold three holdings this year and they're all pretty tiny. It was more, they were, they were more kind of, it was more of a tidying up exercise. Um, the bigger sales we've made this year have been um, not total sales. They've just been profit taking on on some positions where they've become very big, and we've taken a bit of uh, risk off the table. Um, so now we we haven't sold anything which we think is structurally challenged. Um, we we do own some businesses that have will have challenges, or well, they have had challenges this year. They probably will have challenges next year, um, but. Our view again is on a long term basis they're going to do really well, um, so we've been prepared to look over the over the valley um, um, and, and and hold on to those. Are you able to give some examples of some of those companies? Well, I mean a good example I think is Ten Entertainment, which is a bowling business which we've owned for some time. Um, we added to this position at various points this year. Uh, they did a fundraising in March, uh, which we participated in. Um, they've and we've also added to our position subsequently. Um, the shares obviously were clobbered when 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 they were shut down. You know, it's not great for a business if you're not allowed to have customers. Um, but we took the view they could survive for an enormous length of time, even with no customers. It's got a very strong balance sheet. Um, the where we like that business is that we know. Um, customer, we, we've got evidence now after the first lockdown that customers come back very quickly. Um, so um, that will happen. It's a business which has you know, every single one of their sites has has its own parking. Um, they're, 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 they're big sites. They're not off-putting from a sort of cultural perspective for people who might be worried about things like COVID. Um, it's um, a rollout play. They've, they've got a lot of self-help they can do um, in terms of... Um, for instance, changing the way the skittles are uh, removed, the, the, the very big payback on that kind of spend. Um, and our view is coming out of COVID, um, there will be less competition in that space. Uh, there'll be less competition generally in the leisure space. There, a lot of businesses are going to close um, and, and they'll be well positioned. You know, bowling is the cheapest form of family entertainment. So even in a more straightened times you know people will will go and go bowling um so it's it's a it's a before covid it was a very attractive business with nice very high return on capital nice steady growth rate very powerful cash generation there's a period of hiatus now but they're going to go back to what they were doing very very quickly um and when the shares were at their lowest levels we took the view on the most conservative metrics we could think of we thought we'd at least double our money on a five-year view. Um, now, the shares have already jumped quite a bit uh, from their lowest point. They're up probably two-thirds from their lowest point um, um, since the vaccine news. Um, but I still think there's a very long way to go. You know, our, our, the assumptions we've been making are very conservative. Um, and it's a great, very simple business, but it's a great business. So we're very confident about the, the outlook there. Mark, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you very much.